you can't tell, we are social distancing. Indeed we are. We now are entering day three of the bunker, and we've been hearing about all this news, and he kept on coughing, and I was like, you stay on that side of the bunker, and I'll stay on this side of the bunker. I mean, I will say it is a little bit hard to social distance in a 12 by 12 bunker, so as you can tell, uh, it's a little echoey because we are in opposite corners. Yes, we are standing as far away as possible. I have my little circle drawn, he has his little circle drawn, and any time one of us tries to move to the other side of the room, we have to be like a mirror. Yes. Kind of, uh, try to mirror the other person. It is, uh, it is very interesting, but we figured from our bunker, just to keep ourselves from pure boredom, we would inform all of you who don't have a bunker uh, how this thing spreads and how to protect yourself. Uh, now, if you want the details and more information, you should always turn to the CDC. That's not a joke. We're not kidding with that one, guys. Really, for real, look at what the CDC.gov has to say about the coronavirus. Um, but we figured we'd give you the synopsis while we were here. So, Paul, how does it spread? Tell us what we know. Well, first off, there's no vaccine to prevent the coronavirus disease of 2019 or COVID-19. The best way to prevent the illness is to avoid being exposed to the virus, thus social distancing like we are doing. The virus is thought to be spread mainly from person to person between people who are in close contact with each other within six feet. So uh, I guess we could back off. We could give ourselves a little bit more room, but not. Yeah, we could. I mean, I you guys can do the math on what from corner to corner is on a 12 by 12 square. It's a little bit more than six feet. But yeah, you can't be. You can't be too cautious. Yeah, that's true, especially when you're breathing each other's air in the bunker anyway. Yes, and especially considering it's uh, transmitted through respiratory droplets produced when an infected person coughs or sneezes, and these droplets can land in the mouths or noses of people who are nearby and possibly be inhaled into the lungs. That's just kind of gross anyway. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm a bit of a germaphobe to begin with. I know I am a teacher, and uh, some students might say, if you're a germaphobe, why do you not have more, like, disinfecting things in your room. For instance, I ran out of, uh, what's that stuff, Germex stuff. It's because you guys use so much of it. Yeah, they think that it's a shower. They just bathe themselves in yeah. the Germex. So thankfully the school, uh, amid the COVID crisis, has provided us with plenty now. So we yes. are well stocked. And thankfully my wife has gotten plenty of free Bath & Body Works uh, hand sanitizer things to where we're good and sparkly for a little while. So, point being, uh, how it spreads is person to person. This isn't something uh, where like it's in the water or anything like that. It is, it is a standard, it is spread by interacting with another human being. Which is why everything has been canceled. Uh, all the sporting events, all the restaurants, you name it, possibly school. School hasn't been canceled just, just yet, but there's a good chance. Yeah, so uh, we will go ahead and talk some more about that when we get to uh, social distancing. We'll explain that a little bit more. Um, so what steps do we need to take to protect ourselves, Mr. Norman? Number one thing you can do to protect yourself is wash your hands often. So use soap. Actually stand there and wash your hands, the CDC says, for at least 20 seconds. That's a long time. Like, I time myself. I'm going to be clocking in at 10 seconds. Yeah. Um, I've been like, trying to... Make myself wash my hands a little bit longer, and I'm still probably not hitting 20. It is. You can look. I mean, if you are already being forcefully, sociably distanced uh, because, you know, your job or whatever is forcing you to work from home or your school is, uh, there are tons of videos. If you go on Twitter or Instagram or any of those where there are celebrities singing various songs that are the bright length of 20 seconds. Interesting note for Mr. Hendrix out there, former podcast guest who's not allowed in the bunker. Uh, <laughs> if you sing Hell to the Victors, uh, Michigan State, uh, Michigan If you sing Hell to the Victor, Michigan's, yes, there's still a bell in the bunker. We have to know whenever we kind of get out of the bunker. Guys, class. I, okay, let's, we're going to be perfectly honest. Let's not, let's not lie to these people here. The bunker is Mr. Hank out here. We have, shh, I wasn't going to be that direct. <laughs> I was, uh, I was just going to say that we, we miss the belts if we don't have them. We are teachers. We have them in our house to keep our day ordered. Um, but hey, you, you joke every Tuesday. I, I, my phone informs me that it's time to go to lunch to the end. Well, <laughs> like, whenever we were in the hospital, my son was born here recently. I looked at my wife and I was like, well, it's time to go to lunch. And she just shook her head. <laughs> well, yeah, I have... 
Uh, okay, this is a side note. I legitimately have a notification that has been going off on my, on my phone every Sunday night for eight years, and I still haven't turned it off. And it is a notification because eight years ago, back, no, almost nine years ago now, when I was in college, we did a 30 days of prayer thing that happened every night at a certain time. And when we stopped and only did it on Sundays, I actually put a notification in my phone to help you remember on Sundays, and I never turned it off. <laughs> Still goes off every Sunday night. So anyway, 20 seconds of hand washing. Okay. If you sing Hell to the Victors, if your name is uh, Mr. Hendricks twice, that's 20 seconds. All right. Um, if you are somewhere where there is not a lot of soap and water available, use hand sanitizer, but be clear that it contains at least 60% Alcohol. The reason being, it's not guaranteed to kill those viruses if it is not that level. And yeah, I don't think Bath and Body Works hand sanitizer is 60% alcohol. Yeah, so. It's probably 60% glitter. Yeah, now I will say, you can compensate for that by doing more than one washing with hand sanitizer. Um, the reason the percentage there is not because like a lower percentage won't kill anything, it's just because it kills less. So if you do multiple, uh, I don't know if you call it a washing, but multiple scrubbings with the hand sanitizer if it is lower than 60%, that will be helpful anyway. And the other thing, do not touch your eyes, nose, or mouth. Davidson is face palming. No. He is face palming no, right now. Don't kill me, not to stop, can't touch the face. <laughs> Well, Actually, you do need to stop touching your face. Yeah, stop, please stop touching your eyes. I'm glad I washed my hands in our 30-gallon uh, drum of Germex we have down here in the bunker. Yes, uh, every now and then. I got the Germex side, <laughs> so I'm going to live. Yeah, well, I mean, let's be clear. We are joking about that, but, but about the, you know, the, the fatality thing there, but let's be very clear here. If you are young, if you're under the age of 60, this is not a... a disease that kills you. Uh, but you still need to avoid close contact. <laughs> yes, and so you still need to avoid close contact, put distance between yourself and other people. That gets into this whole social distancing thing. And we'll get a little bit more clearly in our next section, uh, coming once again still from the CDC website, is how to protect others. Guys, even though as a young person under the age of 60 without any other kind of underlying conditions, this is not the die kind all right, that does not mean that you shouldn't be taking all of these precautions. Because if you get it, you become a host, sometimes for up to 14 days without symptoms showing. And you do not want to carry this to a loved one just because you were being all out there and not caring about what you were doing. So for real, guys, um, amidst all the jokes, do take these precautions and avoid close contact with people who are sick because... Um, You're something all tardy for six hours. There's something soothing about that noise. I know, it's really relaxing. Sometimes I listen to it on loop, you know, like those 10 hour loops. I just, mm -hmm. I just put it on loop to go to sleep. Um, so anyway, the- well, that's why I couldn't sleep last night. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Uh, anyway, so what are some other ways, while we're talking about ways to protect others, what are some other things that people can do to protect those around them in well, the community? Of course, stay home for sick. Naturally, if you're sick, regardless, you probably need to stay home. But especially now, you need to stay home if you're sick. Uh, if you cough, if you, when you cough or sneeze, you need to cover your mouth, but not with your hands. Uh, cover your mouth and nose with tissue when you're coughing or sneezing, or use the inside of your elbow. Dab when you sneeze. He he dabbed as he said that. Just want you to know. Double dab. He, he's, Triple dab. He's actually doing all of this. I wish we had a camera down here. Um, all right, so. Make sure that you are taking those things. Now, there, there's one that's, okay, it's not controversial, but it has caused a lot of buzz in the news as of late, and that is face masks. Now, um, now of course, it is a 15-yard penalty, an is, automatic first down. It is. Uh, so if you are on the football field, please don't grab them. But if you are sick, you should wear a face mask. If you are not sick, you don't need one. This is opposite of how most people think of this. The purpose of the face mask is to actually catch the pathogens as they leave your mouth. 
not to prevent them from entering your face, right? Because the way that yeah, it's a one-way filter. filter, it's not a two-way two filter. This is this is something that you need to understand. Um, for real, if you are sick and you have to go out in public for some reason, you need to make sure that you have something covering your mouth that you're not out there just hacking on people. All right. If, however, you are not sick. Don't take the masks from people who actually need them to prevent the disease from spreading. Unless you are going to be giving care in close quarters to someone who has the disease. So if they have COVID-19 and you're going to be in a room with them like we are uh, in this bunker, then you need to make sure that you are taking all precautions to protect yourself so that you don't become you a carrier. You what? You you I, didn't, I didn't say I had it. If you're in close proximity to someone who has it, are you insinuating that I have it? You never know. We'll find out in 14 days. Well, luckily, I clean and disinfect uh, all my frequently touched surfaces on this side of the bunker daily. Uh, this includes the tables, the doorknob, because I'm next to the door so I can leave this bunker whenever you finally mutate into whatever final mutation that this virus is going okay, to Okay, this isn't Pokemon. Out. I am not a Pokemon. <laughs> However... Uh, but no, yeah, I disinfect the tables, doorknobs, light switches, countertops, handles, desks, phones, keyboards, toilets, faucets, and sinks, which are also happen to be on my side of the bunker. Why is that, Mr. Norman? What? The toilets? Yeah, why is everything that needs to be cleaned on my side of the bunker? I don't know what you're talking about. I do know that as soon as we're done recording here, I need to use one of those things on your side of the... Anyway, um, so... Uh, make sure all that stuff is clean. In fact, that's what the custodians have been doing very uh, diligently in the school. Yes. Uh, ever since early, early, early this morning, when yeah. I last came out of the bunker to just peek my head out like a groundhog. Yeah, so um, we are staying very clean here, but make sure at home you're doing that as well. If you are trying to clean, make sure that you are using something that actually kills the pathogens. So you could use Uncle D's patented diluting house bleach mixture that you take, you know, five tablespoons, a third of a cup of bleach, and put that into a gallon of water, or take four tablespoons of bleach and put that into a quart of water, you got yourself a solid cleaning uh, uh, liquid solution. There, there. Yeah, solution. cleaning solution. So there you go. That That is the actual percentages you need of bleach. Uh, don't overdo it because you want to make this thing last as long as possible if necessary, right? Uh, the meaning you want to make your bucket of bleach last as long as possible, not the disease. Um, and we already talked about alcohol. Make sure it has at least 70% alcohol if you're trying to clean doorknobs and things like that with it. Um, if there are other uh, register, EPA registered household disinfectants and you got those, you can use them. If you want to know more about that, check out the CDC website. They have seven whole pages of various cleaners that are approved to kill COVID, or excuse me, COVID-19. So you can look on there. But guys, yeah, uh, as always, don't use our podcast as your only means of information about COVID-19. Yes. The CDC is a much more reliable source than us. Because guys, hopefully you understand that if we were really experts on things going viral, we would have more views. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us in the bunker. I'm sure we'll get bored again and come up with some more content for you. And maybe we'll finally decide to break it and get rid of the social distancing that we've established. Yeah, go back to the actual podcast room so that we don't have the horrible echo. But until next time, my name is Paul Davidson. My name is, and Lord willing, will be Scott Norman. And we've been two dumb woke guys. <laughs>